Now we are going to discuss abdominal trauma. First, the one-liners which are frequently asked about abdominal trauma. So question. What is the most commonly injured organ in blunt trauma abdomen? Most commonly injured organ in blunt trauma abdomen is spleen followed by liver. So that is spleen followed by liver. After that, most commonly injured organ. In penetrating trauma, in penetrating trauma, be careful. Initially, it was small intestine, but now it has been replaced by liver. According to ATLS 10th edition manual, it is liver followed by stomach followed by small intestine so it's liver followed by stomach followed by small intestine this is the latest change you have to remember most commonly injured organ in penetrating trauma is liver followed by stomach followed by small intestine after that third question most common most commonly injured organ in gunshot injury in gunshot injury is small intestine in gunshot injury is small intestine after that question is asked what is the most commonly injured part of bowel in blunt trauma abdomen most commonly injured part of bowel in blunt trauma abdomen that bowel should be mobile and fixed and it is jejunum. So, most commonly injured bowel in blunt trauma abdomen and that is jejunum. Question is asked, what is the most commonly injured structure in seat belt injury? So, in seat belt injury, you must be knowing that most commonly injured structure is mesentery. So, most commonly injured structure in seat belt injury and that is mesentery. After that question is asked, most common site of injury. Most common site of injury in deceleration. Most common site of injury in deceleration injury and that is DJ. Duodeno jejunal junction because that portion is fixed as well as mobile. The jejunum is mobile, duodenum is fixed, and that junction is fixed. That's why it's the most commonly injured site in deceleration injury. After that, two three questions are asked regarding investigations in blunt trauma abdomen. Question What is the first investigation done in patients of blunt trauma abdomen? Doesn't matter patient is stable or unstable. First investigation performed in blunt trauma abdomen is past. And the gold standard investigation performed in stable patients of blunt trauma abdomen is CCT. First investigation done in Blunt trauma abdomen patients is fast, whereas gold standard investigation for 
stable patients of blunt trauma abdomen and that is cct that is cct so these are the one liner questions which are frequently asked about abdominal trauma before discussing blunt trauma and penetrating trauma you should be knowing some basic concepts of trauma first we will discuss the investigations first we will discuss past and then dpl it's very very important nowadays lots and lots of questions are being asked about past so what is the full form of past past is focused assessment with sonography for trauma so first is focused assessment with sonography for trauma so what is fast fast is nothing it's the emergency ultrasound which is done very fast emergency ultrasound which is done very fast so question within how much time you perform fast it's performed within 2 to 4 minutes so it's emergency ultrasound performed very fast question was asked how much time is required it is performed within 2 to 4 minutes this is a question perform within 2 to 4 minutes so why we are going to perform fast because we want to assess the potential sites of we want to assess the potential sites of thoraco abdominal injuries thoraco abdominal injuries so what we are going to assess in fast usually we assess four p's in fast so what are those four p's which are assessed the four p's assessed in fast are pericardial sac perihepatic region perisplenic region and pelvis so we are going to assess four p's in the fast that is pericardial sac perihepatic region perispleenic region and pelvis now see how we are going to perform the fast so here you can see it's the sequential assessment of pericardial sac perihepatic region perispleenic region and pelvis so what is that sequential assessment can you see this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 and this is 4 so we have to follow this proper sequence so what are the traditional views in fast there are four traditional views in fast that is first you can see this one this is the first one this is subxiphoid be careful this question was asked subxiphoid transverse view and you know that this subxiphoid transverse view is used for pericardial sac after that you can see this second one this second one is right upper quadrant longitudinal view right upper quadrant longitudinal view and you know that this view is for perihepatic region so this is for perihepatic region similarly you can see this third one this is left upper quadrant longitudinal view left upper quadrant longitudinal view and this one is for perispleenic region
and you can see the fourth one the fourth one is supra pubic this is supra pubic be careful longitudinal and transverse view there is longitudinal and transverse view clear this is for pelvis this is for pelvis so now you can see that there is sequential assessment of these four regions 1 2 3 and 4 so how many views in fast there are total four views question is asked that what is e fast e fast is also known as extended fast it is also known as extended fast in extended fast there is there are two additional views in extended fast there are two additional views and what are those two additional views right thoracic view and left thoracic view so here you can see what that this is right thoracic view and this is left thoracic view so question is asked that how many views are there in e fast can you see there are total six views this is fifth one and this is sixth one so these are the questions which are frequently asked about e fast and in one exam question was asked about e fast that what is the sign seen on e fast in patients of pneumothorax so in patients of pneumothorax there is barcode sign or stratosphere sign so on e fast in patients of pneumothorax there is barcode sign that is also known as stratosphere sign barcode sign or stratosphere sign so this is very important and this was asked about e fast in one exam now we are going to discuss dpl diagnostic peritoneal lavage but see i already told you that fast is the first investigation done in blunt trauma abdomen patients and fast actually replaced the dpl so see the dpl so DPL is diagnostic peritoneal lavage and it is performed for the patients of blunt trauma abdomen. DPL diagnostic peritoneal lavage. Just break the word and you will get the answer. What we are going to perform in DPL, can you see? We are going to perform peritoneal lavage why we are going to perform peritoneal lavage to confirm some diagnosis that's why it's diagnostic peritoneal lavage it is performed for blunt trauma abdomen patients now see how we are going to perform this is abdomen this is umbilicus infra umbilical vertical incision is given after that we are supposed to insert one catheter and that catheter is directed towards pelvis. After that, we are going to aspirate it. We are going to aspirate via catheter. After that, we are going to attach. After that, we are going to instill one liter of saline or ringer lactate into the peritoneal cavity. And then we re aspirate that fluid for assessment. So, see what we do in this case. In this case, first catheter is inserted. After infra umbilical incision,
directed towards pelvis. Aspiration is done. After that, instill 1 liter of normal saline or ringer lactate for lavage and re-aspiration is done. Re-aspiration of fluid is done and this fluid is sent for examination. Now see how it's performed. So in, you can notice that in first case, what we are going to see, we are going to insert a DPL catheter, diagnostic peritoneal lavage catheter, and this catheter is directed towards the pelvis. It's directed towards the pelvis. After that, we are going to put one liter of one liter of saline or ringer lactate. So first we insert the catheter, we perform the aspiration. After aspiration, we have to instill 1 liter of saline. After that, can you see the same bag is reversed and whatever the fluid is there, it is coming and collecting into this bag. And this fluid is sent for assessment that whether there is presence of RBCs, WBCs, fecal matter, vegetable matter and we are then going to find out whether DPL is positive or negative. So see in which cases we consider that DPL is positive. So DPL is considered positive if DPL is considered positive if more than 10 ml of frank blood is aspirated. more than 10 ml of frank blood is aspirated or returned effluent contains returned effluent contains RBCs more than 1 lakh per mm cube WBCs more than 500 per mm cube presence of bile bacteria fecal matter or vegetable matter fecal matter or vegetable matter or there is presence of what amylase. What should be the level? Level should be more than 175 international units per deciliter. So these are the situations in which we consider DPL as positive. Be careful in which situations fast or DPL is positive. It is positive only in two situations. What are those two situations? Either there is bleeding or there is perforation, nothing else. So either there is bleeding or there is perforation, then only fast or DPL is positive. So these are the two basic investigations. Now, whenever fast is positive, whenever fast, fast is positive and the patient is stable, in that case, we have sufficient amount of time to perform CCT to assess that what is the specific injury? Since CCT is the gold standard investigation for the diagnosis of stable patients of blunt trauma abdomen, after fast in stable patients, it has to be performed. 